Hey everyone, I'm Marina from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to cover how to get started with sign in with Google in your Android app using Firebase Authentication. All of the code you're going to see in this video is part of a note taking app that I built with Jetpack Compose, and it's available on GitHub. The link to the repository is available in the description below so you can check out the code and follow along. Here are the topics I'm going to cover today. First, I'll show you the sample app used for this video. Then I'll cover why an authentication service is important, how signing in with OAuth providers work, and how you can get started with Firebase authentication in your Android app. Next, I'll dive into the code. I'll cover how to configure the Credential Manager, a Jetpack library for users sign in, and how to implement sign in and sign up with Google. And finally, I will run the app and we'll test these features together. As you can see, I have a lot of ground to cover. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the sample app I'm going to use. It's called Notes. All notes created by the user are stored in Cloud Firestore and displayed on the main screen, as you can see here. Users can also click on each note that they've created so that they can read, update, or delete it. Once users decide to sign in or create an account, they can do so by navigating to the app's account center screen. Here in this screen, you can see the user's info with some basic profile information. And down here, because the user is a guest user at this moment, they can sign into an existing account or create a new one. Once the user clicks on one of these options, they have to choose between two authentication methods, email and password, or sign in with Google. After the user is properly authenticated, this UI will be updated to reflect the new authentication state. And now that you know how the authentication flow works for this app, let's talk about Firebase authentication. We all know that it's important to keep your users' data safe and secure at all times. You need to ensure that only the right people can read, update, and delete data in your app. An authentication system like Firebase authentication helps your app to know who a user is and based on that, to grant them the appropriate access to data. If you want to learn more about the basics of Firebase authentication and get an overview of all the authentication methods Firebase offers, I recommend watching the video Getting Started with Firebase Authentication on Android. The steps shown on that video are necessary so you can run all the code that I'm going to show to you today. But before we jump into the code, let's talk about how the process of signing in a user to Firebase using the Sign In with Google method works. Sign In with Google is an OAuth provider. OAuth is an open standard for authorization that allows users to grant third-party apps access to their resources on another service without sharing credentials like username and password. There are three main steps to this process. First, the user signs in to the OAuth provider using the provider's SDK or their endpoint. If the sign-in is successful, you receive an ID token for this user. Second, Take this ID token and any other information that might be required and create a credential object using one of Firebase's OAuth providers. And finally, use this credential object to create a new Firebase account and exchange the provider's ID token for a Firebase ID token. It's usually a good idea to allow the users of your app to authenticate with an OAuth provider. It's very convenient since they won't need to create a new account from scratch and remember multiple passwords for different websites and apps. And it's also very secure, since their actual password is never shared, not even with you. And they also have control over what information they share with you. Now, before you can actually write any authentication code in your app, you need to enable the authentication method you want to use in your app. And you can do this in the Firebase console. Click on Authentication in the side menu, then Sign In method. For the Notes app, I'm already using these methods you see here. So I'll go ahead and click on Add New Provider, then select Google. Here in the configuration window, you see this message saying that in order to enable sign in with Google for your Android apps, you must provide the SHA-1 release fingerprint for each app. This is a unique 20 byte identifier generated from the certificate used to sign the app. Once you provide the SHA-1 of your signing certificate, Firebase can create a NOAA 2 client for your app. If you've published your app using Play App Signing, you can get your SHA-1 from the Google Play Console on the App Integrity page. I've added the link with the instructions in the video description. As the Notes apps is still not using Play App Signing, 
I'll be using the Debug Keystore Shell 1 from Android Studio. A quick way to do that is to open your project in Android Studio. Then, click on the Gradle tab on the right-hand side and double-click on Signing Report. This is the equivalent of running Gradle's Signing Report on the terminal. The Shell 1 fingerprint will be displayed right here, so you can copy that and go back to the Firebase console. Open your project settings, scroll down to the Your App section, and find your Android app. Then click Add Fingerprint and paste the Shell 1 you just copied from Android Studio. Now go back to the authentication page to add Google as a sign-in provider. Once you toggle the Enable button, you see these two new fields. The first one allows you to choose a public-facing name for your project. This will be the name presented to users when they are shown any public instances of your project. For example, this will be the name displayed on emails that your users receive after creating an account with your app. You also need to select a support email for this project. This is the email address users should reach out to if they need your support. Once you add this info, you can hit Save. Next, download the updated Google Services file, which now contains the OAuth client information required for sign-in with Google. Don't forget to move this updated config file into the app-level root directory of your app, replacing the now outdated corresponding config file. And make sure this new config file isn't appended with anything. It should be named google-services.json. And now you're ready to start coding. Let's start with adding the dependencies to the app-level Gradle file. First, add the Google Play Services SDK. Then, add the Credential Manager dependencies using the latest version, as you can see here. Android's Credential Manager Jetpack library makes it easier for you to integrate Google Authentication into your app, offering a consistent experience across Android devices using a single API. Next, get ready for production by adding the Play Services classes to your ProGuard file. To do so, open your module's ProGuard rules file and add the following directive. Now you're ready to add the Credential Manager to your app. Here on the Notes app, there's a file named Account Center Buttons, where we store all the buttons that are common for the authentication screens. There is a composable here named Authentication Button. It's a simple button with a text and the Google logo. Once users click on this button, the app should show them the Credentials Manager UI with all the Google accounts available on their device. To do so, let's implement the onClick event. First, you need to use Get Google ID option to retrieve the user's Google ID token. Set the filter by authorized accounts to false so that users can see all of their available accounts, not only the ones they previously used in this app. That means users will be able to perform both sign-in and sign-up with Google. Then, set the server-side client ID. This ID is injected into the app by the Google Services Gradle plugin. All you have to do is reference the default web client ID string. Next, instantiate a get credential request with the Google ID option you just created and use this request to call get credential. Once the result arrives, pass it to the view model by calling on get credential response. Now you can add this authentication button anywhere in the app. When users click on it, they will see the Credentials Manager's UI. Let's start adding it to the Sign In screen. Open the Sign In screen file and add the authentication button to the root composable. There are two parameters you need to pass, the button text and the function that should be called when the Credential Manager result arrives. In this case, the button text will be the Sign In with Google and the function will be on Sign In with Google that is available on the Sign In view model. Next, open the Sign In View model and implement the On Sign In with Google function. First, you need to check that the credential returned is a custom credential of the type Type Google ID Token Credential. If this is false, you need to handle the unexpected credential type. Here, I'm just logging the error, but you probably want to show a message to the user explaining why the sign in did not work. If this is true, you need to create an ID token from the credential data by calling Google ID Token Credential create from. Once you have the ID token, call account service signing with Google. Now let's open the account service implementation file and locate the signing with Google function. Here you need to create a credential object by calling Google Auth provider get credential using the ID token you just created in the sign in view model. Once the credential is ready, sign the user in with Firebase 
auth signing with credential. And that's it. If the user already has a Google account associated with your app, they will be able to sign in very quickly with the credential manager. But you also need to deal with cases where the user wants to create an account in your app from scratch. So let's implement sign up with Google. Open the sign up screen file and add the authentication button to the root composable. Now the button text will be the sign up with Google string and the function will be on sign up with Google that is available on the sign up view model. Once again, in the sign up view model, you need to check that the credential returned is a custom credential of the type type Google ID token credential. And if so, you can proceed to create an ID token and call account service link account with Google. Open the account service one more time and locate the link account with Google function. Create a credential object using the ID token you just received from the sign up view model. Once the credential is ready, get the current Firebase user and call link with credential. If you're still new to account linking, I highly recommend watching this video where Rachel explains how anonymous authentication and account linking work and how you can get started with this authentication method on your Android app. And that's all for the coding part. Let's run the notes app and test the authentication flows. This is the main screen of the app where I can create notes. I'll go ahead and create a short note and save it. Great, I can now see it here in the notes list. Now, if I'm happy with the app and want to create an account using Google Authentication, all I have to do is navigate to the app's account center and click on Sign up with Google. This will trigger the Credential Manager UI where I can see all my available Google accounts and choose which one I want to use. Done. Back on the Notes page, the note I previously created as a guest user still displays. That's the magic of account linking. And if I want to sign out of the app at any time, I can just navigate back to the Account Center and click on the Sign Out button right here. See, I'm back on the Notes page and my note is not being displayed anymore. Let me go to the Account Center one more time and test the Sign In flow by clicking on Sign In with Google. Once again, I can see the Credential Manager UI with the available Google accounts. Let me choose the same account I used on the Sign Up flow. Done. Back on the Notes page and I can see my note again. And that's how you get started with Sign In with Google on an Android app using Firebase Authentication. But as you saw in this video, you can add many other sign-in methods to your Firebase projects and app. If you're interested in learning about these other signing methods and how to use other Firebase services in your Android app, subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel and check out the other videos in the Firebase Fundamental series. And that's all I had for today. Thanks for watching and happy coding!